Bill Twyford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We heard uh, Bill English, the new Prime Minister, uh, in his opening contribution uh, on the debate on the Prime Minister's statement. We have a new Prime Minister, but we don't have a leader. That's right. It's leadership that's gone missing from this national government. And we've gone, in the space of a few short weeks, from the key team to the B team. That's right. And it's, it's sad to see the really telling example of Bill English's leadership deficit was when he turned up at Ratana this year and gave the people at Ratana a lecture on small government and said to them that National had reached the limits of what government could do. Unbelievable. Māori home ownership under this national government is falling through the floor. Māori home ownership is now less than half the rate for the general population. Māori have been hammered by national's housing crisis. They are four times more likely under this national government to be waiting for a state house and five times more likely than the general population to be homeless, according to the, uh, the last census. Um, Bill English says he has reached the limits of what government could do. He's run up the white flag. He's got no ideas. He's got no appetite for reform. And by contrast, what did, John, uh, what did Andrew Little uh, say at Ratana? He said, we'll work with you. We'll use Kiwi Bill to build 100,000 affordable homes for first-time buyers, and in doing that, we will house thousands of Māori families in their first home. We'll partner with iwi and other Māori organisations. We'll look at collective mortgages. We'll look at ways, innovative ways that we can work together to drive up the Māori rate of home ownership. Mr Speaker, that is leadership. And that's the kind of thing that we haven't heard from Bill English over the last few weeks. It's hard to lead and be courageous and tackle the real challenges and problems that this country faces when you're in denial. But denial is the National Party's mindset when it comes to the number one problem, the biggest challenge facing New Zealand today, and that's the housing crisis. And it was appropriate that we kicked off the start of the new year with a new report from Demographia, the international think tank, that, that monitors and indexes housing affordability. And uh, it was a real wake-up call to the eight years of failure and excuses that passes for a housing policy under this national government. The demographia report showed that, once again, uh, New Zealand ranks as one of the most unaffordable countries uh, for housing in the world. It showed that Auckland, our biggest city, ranks behind only Sydney, Vancouver and Hong Kong for unaffordability. That is, the cost of housing, of purchasing a house, uh, relative to income. So um, uh, that more than anything shows that eight years of failure of this national government in the housing area have made this country an international basket case uh, for housing. But did Bill English have anything to say about housing in his State of the Nation speech? Not a word. He offered no hope to the tens of thousands of frustrated Kiwi families who only want a crack at the Kiwi dream of owning their own home. He had nothing to say to the, th the more than half of the New Zealand population who live in rental housing these days, who are facing, because of the state of the housing market, facing the most astronomical rent increases. In Auckland, according to the most recent data from Trade Me, average rents have gone up by more than $5,000 in the last five years. How can working families find an extra $5,000 to pay the rent? No wonder, no wonder the, uh, the leading statisticians and analysts tell us that it's the housing crisis, it's housing costs that are driving the big increases in poverty and inequality that we're seeing. But Bill English had nothing to say about this uh, in his uh, State of the Nation speech. He had nothing to say, no hope to give to people who are living in squalor uh, because of his housing crisis. And I want to um, uh, mention the case of uh, Auckland woman Tracy Penny, who um, featured in a TV New Zealand story recently um, that was brought to light thanks to the excellent work by my outstanding colleague, Carmel Cipollone. Yeah. Tracy Penny 
uh, has been on the waiting list uh, for more than a year to get a state house. She's a tetraplegic after a childhood uh, accident. She's been living in a van for the last six weeks with her partner and a, a four-year-old toddler. It is completely unacceptable that this should be allowed to go on in New Zealand today, but for a year she's been languishing on the state housing list because in West Auckland there just aren't any available state houses. There is no emergency housing. So people like Tracy Penny and people like 84-year-old uh, 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 Navy veteran Frederick Shimon, who was living in a shed in my electorate, a shed that was open to the weather. He was sharing makeshift cooking and bathroom facilities with several other tenants who were living, paying hundreds of dollars a week to rent buses and a shared shed uh, and caravans on a property in West Auckland. This is the face of, the, of Bill English's housing crisis because Bill English has been the architect of what passes for a housing policy uh, under this national government. Sir, it's all about um, leadership. And uh, when Bill English said that they had reached um, the limits of what a government could do, he exposed the bankruptcy of ambition and the bankruptcy of ideas. What is the result of, it, the result of this? The result is that families have been shut out of home ownership. People are living in squalor, and all the government can do is tell them to be patient. Um, it doesn't, uh, and all over New Zealand, uh, people are facing steep rent rises, and not just in Auckland, in, in uh, regional centres like Tauranga, Wellington, uh, Hamilton, and actually all over New Zealand, we're seeing rent increases of 10, 15% uh, percent a year. What's the government doing? They trot out an endless series of announcements that are designed to make it look as if they're doing something about the housing crisis, but in fact it's just an elaborate series of excuses designed to throw people off the scent and provide cover for a, a deliberate policy of inaction. Nick Smith's vacant Crown land policy that for the last few months uh, the government has been uh, talking up has resulted in not a single new house being built since it was announced a year and a half ago. He promised that new houses would be built by the end of last year, but they are still in the planning stages and doing earthworks. He promised 500 hectares of land would be available. He'll be lucky, on the latest information that we've got under the Official Information Act, he'll be lucky to deliver even 1 20th uh, of that. They've been going around, Bill English has been going around talking up this great um, uh, government-backed uh, building program and talking about a building boom. Well, there is no boom. There is no boom. We need 16,000 houses a year just to keep up with population growth in Auckland. 16,000 new dwellings. The latest data shows they've only just consented 10,000 in the last year. The deficit of 30,000 homes that's built up in Auckland under National's Watch is increasing by 6,000 a year. It's getting worse. Is there any wonder that uh, house prices continue to outstrip people's ability uh, to pay them? So what will Labor do? We have a housing policy that is jammed full of constructive, positive solutions. We are going to build 100,000 affordable homes. We're going to raise the build rate to what it was in the early 2000s and what it was under Norman Kirk in the 70s, but the National Party says it can't be done because they lack ambition for New Zealand. We are going to ban foreign speculators from buying existing homes just like they do in Australia, a policy that has channeled $30 billion into the construction of new homes in the last year. We're going to improve rental standards and make sure that every home in New Zealand is rental property is warm and dry, because it's not good enough, in Labor's view, that 50,000 kids are hospitalised every year with infectious and respiratory diseases. These are our policies. We're going to reform the planning system to make it more pro-growth, to encourage people to build more without sacrificing the quality of our, of our built environment. And we're not going to continue to sell state houses. National is selling 3,000 state houses in Christchurch, even John Key's childhood home, when they should be building thousands and thousands of extra state houses. That, sir, is the kind of leadership, that is the courage, that is the determination and the ambition that Andrew Little's Labor-led government will show when we fix the housing crisis.